So for the past month or so, I've been testing this theory between solo mining and mining via pool with Casper miners. And quite honestly, even though there's a higher level of risk associated with solo mining, the risk that if your luck is really bad, um, it could be really unprofitable and you could make little to no uh, money solo mining. But on the opposite end, if you're really lucky, you could make significantly more. And in fact, in my case, almost twice as much solo mining than I did mining via pool. So in today's video, we're gonna break down the overall rewards that I've made with solo mining via Caspa, talk about Caspa and really look at what Caspa is preparing for this year. Now, obviously a lot of you have been following me with about Caspa, Caspa mining for a very long time, but a lot of you also wanna get involved in mining Caspa and we'll talk about how you can do that in today's video as well. Well, if you're new here, my name is Alex, talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. Enjoy this video, smash up the like. Without further ado, let's jump in the video. So the last couple of days have, or really the last two days in the crypto industry have been at peak volatility. We've seen Bitcoin hit 49K, go down to 45K. It's been absolutely insane. But one thing that has remained true and really unmovable to a degree is Caspa. Caspa is kind of now up to this 12 cent range and it's kind of just staying there. Now, one of the things that is most interesting about Caspa is the passive income opportunity that Caspa provides via mining caspa now many of you know i've been mining caspa since i don't know 2022 which seems like last year but it's technically two years ago now so i've been involved in mining caspa for a very very long time and one of the things that i've always done and one of the reasons of my success behind mining caspa is i always tested different ways to mine more cast and really if you don't come out of your shell and, and test different methods Sometimes they'll work, sometimes they don't. You just will never know if there's a different way to do something or a different pool to mine to that could possibly provide you with more Caspa. Now, and that's really the point of today's video is to kind of showcase me running through a test for the last month, almost month and a half of mining Caspa with KS0 Pro units, one solo mining, one pool mining, and showcasing the results because the the results are impressive and for me i was quite nervous mining solo because i knew there was the chance that i could go a week without finding a block and the opposite of finding a block every single day so for a lot of you who are maybe not solo mining and have kind of been puzzled by this question or maybe not wanting to uh take that risk Hopefully this video opens your eyes a little bit to my results of mining Caspa with solo mining and the insane results that it got me. So when you look at the current industry for Caspa mining, Caspa mining is the most profitable mining out there. Uh, and it's the reason that more manufacturers are coming into the space, something that we'll talk about in today's video as well, and why so much attention is on Caspa. You look at the top crypto miners from a profitability standpoint, and four out of the top five are Caspa ASICs. So the, the numbers are all there. The more manufacturers coming into the space, as I talked about very early on, that will drive prices of machines lower, get more people involved in Caspa. So it does a lot of very positive things for the entire ecosystem, but it just goes to show you that as more and more people get involved, newer people who are getting involved in mining Caspa, maybe you just got your K0 Pro, hopefully this video kind of shows you what kind of options are available out there and why, at least in my opinion, mining solo is the way to go. So I have two K0 Pro units uh, on K1 pool. Now, there's multiple pools out there that offer both solo and pool mining. For me, I use K1 pool. I've not had any issues out of them. They have very low fees. And overall, my experience has been just fantastic. So I really have nothing to complain about. Now, 
my two ASICs as, or my two miners here, uh, whether you call it KS0 Pro an ASIC or not, uh, but with, it, it's not your standard looking ASIC for sure. But when you look at these two, you can see that over the, and we look at some of the statistics, the overall average hash rate um, and the overall numbers are pretty close. I mean, most of them, you know, you see the hash rate for the last 30 minutes, the last three hours, you know, they're relatively close. Um, so there's not going to be a huge differentiating factor. If you have multiple KS0 pros, they're all going to be right around that 200 gig hash uh, range. Now, you also see that the difference of the blocks found. Now, my KS0 Pro that's on a solo pool has found nine blocks, one of those actually in the last 24 hours. But my pool miner has only found six blocks. Now, I don't get paid out specifically based on those blocks. It's all based on a cumulative overall contribution of the network hash rate. But in the end, the solo miner has been a little bit luckier finding blocks. You can see also the overall luck. Now, luck is something that confuses a lot of people, but essentially it's kind of like golf, even though I don't think with luck you can go in the negatives. But essentially, the lower your percentage, the better. Um, lower percentage means it really didn't require a lot of luck for you to find the next block. So if you find a block and it's 7% luck before you hit the next block, you're extremely lucky. And the average will eventually be somewhere around 100%. That's kind of the median average luck. Now, I've had at times, and you can see here, uh, that my luck in the last seven days is 106%. So it's a little bit above average, which means I'm a little bit less lucky in the last seven days than the average individual. Now, you can see over the last 30 days, my average luck is 62%, which is kind of insane to even think about, but it's extremely lucky. Now, to a degree, this is going to fluctuate, and, and everyone's experience with solo mining is going to be different, so do be aware of that. But for me, in the last 30 days, my luck sits at 62%. And uh, the amount of CASPA that I've mined, which really is the biggest uh, piece of the pie, if you will, is 1,313 CASPA. Now, when you compare this to pool mining, I've earned just over 827 CASPA via pool. So I've made 500 CASPA more solo mining. There was a point when at exactly one month, I had double the amount of CASPA in rewards from uh, solo mining than I did pool mining. It was absolutely insane to think that one miner, even though the hash rates are the same, one being on solo has earned me twice as much as one being on pool. Uh, and, and there is that safety option, that safety net that a lot of people like behind pool mining because they know they're going to get consistent payouts to a degree while with solo, you could hit a block every single day and you could go a whole week without hitting a block at all. So if you were to get involved in solo mining, the one thing I would highly recommend is that you give it time. Don't solo mine for three or four days, not hit a block and just give up because that's really not the best strategy. For me, it took three days before I hit my first block. Uh, and then after that, it was just block after block. And so it, it really does take time. It, you really should give it at least a month uh, testing it before you really kind of decide which way to go. But I've seen with other YouTubers that I've talked to and other individuals who are mining Caspa with whether that's KS1s, KS2s, uh, KS0 Pros, they're more profitable solo mining than they are mining to a pool. So something to highly consider the, with the fact that you have uh, the numbers right in front of you when you're considering the difference between pool mining and solo mining. Now, obviously the big thing that a lot of people look at and pay attention to is the price action of CASPA. But to a degree, for me, it's more important about the amount of CAS and not necessarily the price of CAS itself. Uh, and the, the easiest way for me to kind of really share this is showcasing the, the same kind of example that I have with my entire journey with Caspa, uh, with my three giga hash farm uh, back in 2020, I was mining about 2,000 to 3,000 casts per day 
Uh, and back then, it, I wasn't making any money. Most of my cost was eaten up by electrical cost. Uh, and on most days, I was either breaking even or losing like three or four dollars per day. Now, you fast forward a year and a half, uh, and that would have been three hundred dollars per day in profit every single day when I was mining Caspa. So you really can't look at Caspa in the same way that you look at a lot of different cryptocurrencies. You have to consider the fact that what the cast today may not be the same value of the cast tomorrow. And that's why it's more important getting more Caspa than it is the dollar value of the Caspa itself. Now, one thing that has been changing over the past couple of days, and this is kind of slowed down, is the overall network hash rate. You can see for the last two weeks, this is just taking into account the last month. Uh, when we look at the network hash rate based on what we have here on December 12th at the network hash rate being 105 petahash. When we fast forward two weeks, uh, the network hash rate had increased by about 20, 22 petahash. Now, you compare that to where the network hash rate is now, it's only increased about 10 petahash. So there's been a, a I wanna say a significant drop, there's been a bit of a decrease in network hash rate for the last two weeks compared to the two weeks prior. Uh, there could be a couple of things that do impact this overall, but it is beneficial because that means there's less people mining Caspa or newcomers to mining Caspa, uh, and you kind of keep some of those rewards to yourself, but the overall growth continues to occur. The network hash rate continues to increase and the network becomes more secured over time. Now, the other thing that's really happening that you do have to consider is more manufacturers are getting involved in producing Caspa ASICs. I talked about this very early on when Bitmain got into Caspa ASICs, and I said, be aware of the fact and be expecting that more manufacturers are going to get into producing Caspa ASICs because it's literally what everybody wants. If you looked at your Christmas list, you probably had a Caspa ASIC on it. So if you look at the people looking into Caspa ASICs, you see manufacturers saying, hey, where can we make the most money? It's gonna be where the demand is, and that is Caspa miners. So we already know Bitmain is into the KS3 Caspa space. We know Ice River has their lineup of Caspa ASICs. We also know that there's this random manufacturer, uh, the Wind Miner, the K9. Uh, from what I've been told, it is legitimate. I've not seen one in person, uh, but it, I've been told it is legitimate. This exists on the market. Uh, and recently, uh, Gold Shell has announced that they are coming out with a Caspa Miner as well. So you're going to have multiple different options, which in a free market, this typically drives the price down, drives the competition up, and in the end, results in a better product for the retail consumer. So I'm pretty excited to see four different manufacturers coming in this space because it just means good things typically for retail. Uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see what Gold Shell comes out with, considering they're going to come with an at-home miner like a caspa mini uh and then a little bit more of an industrial scale um asic as well so it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that uh but i think good things ahead for gold shell so leave with, with that leave your thoughts comments down below on pool versus solo solo mining are you participating in solo mining? What's your experience? Have you seen one being more beneficial than the other? Have you seen different types of pools being better at solo mining than other pools? Uh, share your thoughts, comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, smash up the like. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.